<laughs> okay. Um, well, my main my main medium is watercolor, and that does influence my work. Uh, I like a, a little more of a loose approach. But I also feel like drawing is the most important aspect of, of visual art, and so I draw a lot too. I, I admire a lot of other artists' style and a lot of different styles, um, from Pollock to. Edgar Payne is a great landscape artist, um, but I don't want to copy them. I, I'm just trying to do it my way, <laughs> to steal from Frank Sinatra. Whatever my subject matter, people, animals, or landscapes, I look to make ordinary scenes captivating. I want my viewers to feel something about what I paint. I use both direct strong application of paint and also layering for more subtle passages. I work with strong lighting, atmosphere, and exaggerated color to make my subjects exciting and appealing. I like to paint stormy skies as shown in two of my images since they inherently portray a sense of strength and power. In my duck painting, I took advantage of late day lighting to play up the warm colors for this more contemplative subject. I think as artists, we're all continuously working to find our own unique voices. I paint in acrylics mostly, and I'm also a wood carver and do wood sculpture. And I find that when I'm working in a couple different mediums, they cross over in a certain sense so that I get inspiration from one to the other. I like to explore nature. I do have moose and bear. <laughs> coyotes running through my property uh, and I am totally in love with granite formations. I think looking at nature, whether it's up really close to see all the colors in a piece of granite or to be able to look off in the distance and find it gives us a sense of meditation. I believe that art and our memories are the things that's, that uh, make me inspired and often my art is a combination of memories that I have as well as what I'm looking at. I just try to be me and express what I have to say. So I'm exploring different ways I believe to show my emotions about nature and I think people need to find their own ways to look at art and if it speaks to them, that's great. My use of watercolors to create paintings stem from a familiarity with the medium that goes back to childhood. Netajay explores the creatures and plants that share my world while acknowledging the temporal. My art stands out because of my dry brush technique that I use to create bold colors and dark shadows, uncommon to traditional watercolors. Mary Evelyn Dahlia captures the fleeting beauty of a single flower or recognizing the life cycle of the flower. I'm also one of the few watercolor artists that do starry skies. My painting on the Pleiades shows a shift by simply looking up, being freed from the horizon, and staring into infinity. Hiding objects within a painting is also something I like to do that most others neglect. The Pleiades has three critters and two craft hidden within the work. My art is an exploration of myself and my relationship to reality. What I do in my work, I try to create a sense of awe. I try to work from that space of awe, of wonder in the world. And I hope that that's what I create in another person. I work in acrylics. I work in watercolors primarily. And even when I'm trying to be the most abstract, somehow it always ends up being some kind of landscape because that is what has meaning for me in this world. It's the world itself, the beauty around us. I try to find what has meaning for me, and since each of us, every human being is unique, what I create is mine, just like what anybody creates will reflect them. 
My work is quite diverse and um, I use a variety of materials. And really my work is a response to the effects that globalization is happening on the natural environment. In particular, um, looking at the Anthropocene epoch, which is the time period we're living in, how humans are affecting our planet and altering the landscapes, which causes me to use a lot of reclaimed materials, such as um, bike inner tubes and plastic bags and other found objects, including found papers to make my collages. And I, I, that's what I primarily work with, is mass-produced discarded materials um, to create works of art. And even my um, collage work is just focusing on what I like to appreciate about nature. That's a significant theme in all of my work. I've done some mural work too that focuses on just raising awareness to take action on things like climate change. The library had put on shows about local forests. They were threatened by the Forest Service and the county. It was an exploration of the importance of forests to us here in Never. I like to use different processes. Primarily here at the library, I've shown photographs, photographic prints of different angles of uh, local forests. And different aspects of the forest. So the media of photography shows the images that people see and the images they could see if they looked at the forest with a different angle. I set myself apart because although I've tried to get other local artists to fully represent the importance of the forest, they, they don't see it the same way I see it. I guess that's true of all artists. So uh, I am the forest artist of Netherwood. It is nature. I am trying to, to honor nature and everything. And I've been using a lot of processes and materials. And um, I am actually graduating on some new ideas. Uh, aside from the oil landscapes, there is a traditional thing old wood that I picked up on hiking. I think it's all about collaboration, artists, and nature, so that we have a work of art that goes together. And I have my website to the portrait by Cecilia. So you can look at some of that work. My art focuses away from the human built environment. I regard nature and creation as the greatest artwork of all. And my goal as an artist is to reflect, explore, and express the sacred beauty of the natural world. I work in a post impressionist style as an old fashioned modernist, following most closely in the footsteps of Canada's Group of Seven. I paint with oils in the plein air style, essentially wet on wet in one sitting. Working to capture the essence of a place, I seek to go beyond the mind, to access the emotional level, the level of the spirit or the soul. The Western landscape seems to be everywhere, but it isn't always distinctive. For me, I have never been able to do things the way other people do. I can only go my own way. It's the real world I love, interpreted through this one man's imagination. I use photography as a medium because I like to capture what already exists in what I call God art. And God art is something that I kind of help people connect with. I like to explore the details of nature to bring to the eye things that so many people walk right past. And um, many of the details that I share are things that people are surprised to see so close. Uh, I don't have uh, any specific techniques beyond that. I don't tend to manipulate any of my art. Uh, and if I do, it's a very specific, separate subset. I set myself 
myself apart by just having my own unique eyes. I have the great joy of being able to go out in nature a lot. My sweetheart, what we see and what we capture is something that others are aware of but haven't captured the same way in their own minds or imagination. And that's what sets us apart. What I want to explore in my work is the risk, the unknown, the human error that happens in every piece I do. I use all kinds of materials. I stretch my own canvas. I leave it raw or unprimed, no gesso, for I like the texture and I like the absorption and I love to paint art large. I climb ladders and enjoy the space between the canvas and the medium. And to me, color, mm, it just adds a nice spark. We need color in this world. I'm an abstract painter, so I never know exactly what is going to take place. I would answer that question of setting myself apart from the artist is my exploring of materials. One of my overarching goals as an artist is to capture rarely seen aspects of animal behavior and also document how animals are interacting with their environment or with each other. And to do that, you really have to become a part of that world. And typically, I'll head out into nature with my camera without a specific shot in mind. I want to be open to what's going on around me and not constrained by predetermined thoughts associated with a specific image. And I wanted to explore how the animals found in the Nederland area interact with their environment. There's the bull moose in the montane meadow, snowshoe hare, snowdrift, and the broad-tailed hummingbird foraging on wild penston. I think there are a few ways that I set myself apart from other wildlife photographers. First, I actually have a doctorate in animal behavior and wildlife ecology. And I think that provides a unique background for understanding my subjects. I'm generally a pretty patient person, and so I'm often content to sit in one spot and let nature reveal her secrets to me over her time. And I've also spent a good portion of my life exploring the outdoors. I think that experience is really helpful in helping prepare for shooting different animals and shooting in different environments. I work with fire, salvage, wood, and oil paint to create 3D wall hangings and sculpture using a procedure I call fire sculpting. I began exploring damage and decay of my favorite medium through my favorite medium. I began burning wood. I, keeping true to my conviction of reducing waste, I attempt to create a process that produces zero waste. I use only salvaged wood as I do not want to kill any more trees just for my art. Eventually, I see an image in the pattern of the grain or I decide on an appropriate color scheme and composition to communicate either the sadness of decay or the beauty found in the circle of life. I believe this contradiction is the quality that sets my pieces apart from other artists. The contradiction between my need for close-up detail and control and the piece's haphazard shaping by fire and its fluid wood grain. My focus has always been a combination of art and science. So, and I worked at the National Center, well, I still do work at the National Center for Atmospheric Research for about 30 years. So, um, really, my art has been a focus of how it applies to science. I'm thrown into different conditions all the time and I have to figure out how to uh, utilize my camera to, um, to use the right settings and everything for the particular situation. And, you know, as, it, for me, it's a lot about taking something that's very factual, very scientific, 
and making it look great so people are more interested in it. You know, I think a lot of it is that I had this dual discipline. You know, I went to uh, CU in Boulder and I have a double major in biology and fine art. And so that dual discipline has always given me sort of a, I don't know, I think a, a, a little a step ahead in being able to be successful as a photographer. I uh, mentor people quite a bit, mentor young, especially young gals. And, uh, you know, they ask me, what, what, uh, how can I become a good photographer? And I'd say, well, you know, don't concentrate just on photography. You have another discipline that you're good at. And that, that really helps. I want to paint what I feel as well as what I see. I'm mostly a representational painter, and so I'm continually challenging myself to become more abstract. Paintings have to have more movement, they have to have color, and they have to be playful, and it has to be fun, and it has to express something uniquely me. I always um, like to experiment with something new, either that my students are interested in or often what I'm interested in. So these two paintings were painted with a palette knife and a spray bottle. And then I tilted the paper in different directions and moved the water and paint around just to see what I would get. And it was a lot of fun. For me, painting with watercolors is a lot like a dance. I often have to stand up when I'm painting so I can move around more because my inspiration comes from my love of being out in nature. I really want my paintings to express the beauty I see and the peace that I feel.